Okay, here is part two, which is the exercises to help you with lateral knee pain. So we worked on mobility for part one. Part two is all the homework as far as rehab, exercise, strengthening. I'm gonna give you four things to do. The first one's a prep one. Now, with lateral knee pain, obviously pain on the lateral side of the knee, whether that be from around your patella or your ITB or your side of your quad, maybe it's meniscus, whatever that is, you've got to make sure that your quads are on before you start all these exercises. A lot of these exercises are glute related, meaning we're doing a lot of work up here to control the knee, because a lot of the time that lateral knee pain is becoming, or coming on because of the angle of what the knee is doing when you are playing sport or running or exercising. So big focus on that. But I wanna make sure that you start with getting the quad turned on. Easiest way of doing that. Grab a little Pilates ball like that, behind the knee. Now you could use a Swiss ball. If you're in the gym, you could use a big Swiss ball if you wanted to. Pilates ball is really easy for home. It goes right behind, well not behind the knee almost, it's behind the thigh. So just above the knee, behind the thigh. And you've got to have a little bit of squish in there to push against, okay? What you do with that is simply go from flexion, so you're in a little bit of flexion, and you just go and crush the ball, okay? Now what I recommend you do is when you is you push down through your heel when you do that. Okay, so while I'm trying to crush the ball, I'm also trying to drive down through the heel, which actually turns me on a little bit here, right? But the main focus is on the quad. We want to make sure this quad is sort of fired up, ready to do the three other exercises I'm going to be working on to help you with your lateral knee pain, okay? So 30 second loads with that, maybe three or four of those to really switch it on. And just in between when you're resting it, do the other side, of course, but try and work on is the maximal squeeze that you can do for 30 seconds with no pain though. So if I put that here and I'm pushing backwards and there's pain here, okay, you need to back off until there's no pain, all right? It might just be how far where your foot is, okay? If it's a big ball and your foot's too close, you're not gonna be able to push your knee straight. So just make sure your foot's not too far away either, that you're just pushing and it's too easy, all right? So you've gotta to get to the point where this is really turned on and you keep it going the whole time, squeezed on till you feel that sort of good fatigue, okay? So good sort of fatigue, pain if you like, through the quad muscle, but not lateral knee pain, okay? Like I said, 30 seconds or so, four of those. Now, what you work on is three exercises to try and improve your knee strength and your glute strength combined. First one I want you to work on is just simple abduction of the hip. So. With this one, you might find you need to use a pretty, uh, maybe a heavy, but maybe even a medium one of these tubing. You can use TheraBand, so like the wide band if you like. This is just easy to wrap around a pole as an anchor, so super easy like that. That's why you like using tubing. This one, if you're training, uh, you're training both legs with this, but put it on one leg, you'll probably find one way is a little bit harder than the other. Now, on the foot, you can wrap it, sort of just lock it in if you like. What you're gonna work on is hip abduction. So we're trying to work on your gluteus medius and minimus, sorry, hip abduction with a little bit of bias to going backwards. So what you can do, you may find you wanna put one foot in perhaps front of that, okay? So when you go back, the band is behind you rather than the band and being in front of you, hitting you. So you could put one foot in front. Most well, I'm gonna hold a pole for balance, but try not to. You, you might wanna start off holding a pole and then trying to let go of the pole. But you stand on one leg with the knee bent, okay? So even if this leg is your lateral pain leg, this leg will get a workout because I'm doing a closed chain static work here with my knee bent and my hip bent. So I'm doing hip flexion, knee flexion. This leg I want straight and I'm gonna do abduction that way in a bit of a posterior way. When you do this, make sure you don't go outwards with your foot. Try and stay relatively straight with that foot, okay? And don't lean over too much onto that pole. Stay on one leg, out you go, slowly in. Every now and again, touching the pole for a better balance. The deeper you go with the bend here, the more this is gonna work. Now you'll find that you will feel this on both glutes, you have both thighs working again. I don't want lateral knee pain with this, but you're trying to work on open chain work on one side here. So I'm doing hip abduction work here, okay? And I'm doing hip stabilization, lumbar pelvic stabilization on the other side. So when I turn around, I'm doing 
exactly the same but the other way. So it's good to get this done both sides because you'll get benefits for both sides with this, all right? And benefits in both directions. So again, I might go for the stand in front, hold this if I need to, and then I'm gonna go a little bit of a bend in my knee, sit back here, so I'm working here, straight leg, out it goes, okay? Now I'm working again, like I said, open chain here, close chain here, okay? So really, really awesome to try and get your glute strength and your knee stability at the same time. Good exercise, that one. Start off with that one. Then what I want you to do is work into what we call a skater squat. Now, to try and make your glutes work a little bit harder with a skater squat, use a band like this. You'll probably have to use one of these sort of thick booty bands like this to get enough power through. When you do this, I recommend use a towel for the sliding part and obviously you need a slippery floor. So that could be like floorboards or lino, that sort of thing. That leg there, or that one there, is the slider. Okay, this band goes on around for resistance. Like I said, you need a bit of glute work done with this. This will provide the resistance for you. So above the knees, all right? Now, when you do this, you're doing a squat on the non-sliding leg. So I'm doing a, it's sort of like the other one where you're doing two things, okay? But most of the work the focus is on the planted leg, not the moving leg. This moving leg should not have too much weight through it, all right? I want to be doing the squatting work on this leg and not shifting my body away from that leg, and I'll show you why. Because if I do this work here, okay, I move, one, I'm not getting much tension on that band, but two, I'm shifting my weight off that leg, okay? And when I pull back, I'm sort of doing more groin work than I am doing hip work, all right, at the back. So I wanna make sure, if I look in the mirror, when I, from starting upright, I'm gonna squat down, so I'm sitting backwards, bending my knee, sliding this leg out. As I stretch this leg out, the weight here makes me work really hard here, okay? There's a resistance going on for my left buttock and my left hip to try and help stabilize my left knee, all right? This one's not doing too much. So when you do this, just make sure that you should be feeling this all on your planted side. So for me, it's my left side because that's planted. I should be feeling like my quads doing work. I should be feeling like my hips doing a whole lot more work. So as I go out, I'm looking at my knee, making sure it's tracking over my foot and making sure my hip is tracking directly over my knee. So if I look at that point there, there's not much weight going on here. My hip is directly over my knee. My knee is directly over the front, the middle of my foot. And then when I push up, I push up through that planted leg. I don't go and pull with this leg here, all right? So that's another really good one for this planted leg to try and work on that stability, which will help you when you're playing sport. Not only are you gonna gain some strength to control this knee this way to stop you getting that lateral knee pain, but also if you, if you use a mirror, it'll train your movement patterns to be in that position, okay? Not let it roll in, all right? So when you are playing sport and running and it's gotta be automatic and you can't think about it, you've practiced enough times, you've improved that movement pattern, you'll probably find that that knee improves in its alignment. Really important stuff. So, that leads me into my last one. Now, this is called a sit to stand. We do this a lot for testing for ACLs when they're sort of, you know, end stage, see how strong you, how stable people are. What I'd work on is a bench. You can do this, not really on a sofa, but a chair would be better at home, um, bench in the gym. What you're aiming to do is a sit to stand on one leg, okay? So you're aiming to be really good at this sort of movement. Okay, you'll start off wobbly, it'll go all over the shop. So what I suggest we do is you do a sit to stand with a split stance. So instead of trying to stand up with one leg, you put one leg back behind here. So the focus is still on the front. So say this is my lateral pain leg, I put that leg in the front, all right? I'm trying to keep this knee, I'm trying to train myself, can I stand up with this leg more than this leg, that's why this leg's backwards, and keep my knee in line with my foot, and obviously my hip in line with my knee. So when I lean forward and stand up, I'm trying to do that, okay? As I come down, I've hardly got any weight here. It's just, just a little bit as I drop down into there. I need this for a little bit of weight shift off that leg so it's not 100%, but also for a little bit of balance so I can just drive through that leg. I'm trying to train my brain to keep my knee 
in line with my foot so it stops rolling in, causing my pain perhaps out there. And what this will do is train that movement pain like the other exercises where I'm using my hip and my knee together to try and achieve great knee stability, all right? And you just need to practice a lot of those. Like we're talking sort of 20, 25 of those because there's no load with this. And I am supported here, so I can do quite a bit with this. Just make sure a couple of tips with this one. Don't lean forward, all right? And then try and just push up like that. It's not really doing too much. You've got to try, when you go forward, your knee goes forward and up like a squat, okay? Not too far of your toes, but you're allowed to go over your toes, all right? Same on the way down. When I come down, knees go forward over the toes, you sit backwards, all right? A little bit of assistance here. When you get better and better and better, the way you progress this one is to put less weight through this leg. So as I go up, it's just basically 80%, almost 90%. When I come down, I could try and lift my toe off. So I'm coming down, which is gonna be an easy way of progressing without that off. And eventually, what I'll do is I'll come down and sit down, and then I'll sit back up again. Then you've gotta try and do 20 of those, okay? So it gets harder and harder and harder as you get better and better and better, but that's the idea. So, give those three a shot. Hopefully that helps you with your lateral knee pain. See you next time.